It's official. Australian households are now spending more than they are earning. Consumer spending has been outpacing household disposable income in a process labelled as dis-saving. This isn't a new phenomenon, it's actually been going on since 2014. On average, people have been whittling away at their savings that they had so prudently built up in the years following the global financial crisis of 2008. This dis-saving phenomenon could also mean that people have been getting into too much debt, and using these extra funds to spend more than they earn. Now that house prices are falling, it's a bit of a double whammy for the average Australian. Reduced savings could be at least somewhat supported by an increase in house prices, but now that both are in decline, it could spell big trouble for the Australian economy. This saving is fairly rare, but has happened before. In the lead-up to the GFC in the early 2000s, Australians went on a bit of a debt fueled spending spree. But things were different back then. Wage growth was stronger, and the economy was growing faster than it is now. The Governor of the Reserve Bank at the time, Ian McFarlane, warned a parliamentary committee in 2003 that borrowing could not continue to grow like this. He said that something would have to give. Either people would have to curb spending, or disaster was inevitable. He was right on both counts. The global economy crashed, and people stopped spending. Consequently, household savings went up, and the economy almost went into recession. When people don't spend, the economy stagnates. George Bush knew this during his presidential term. He famously gave a speech where he said, I encourage you all to go shopping more. He's right. Without spending, the economy simply doesn't work. To be a responsible citizen, we must all go out and buy stuff, and usually that involves buying stuff we don't really need. With relation to supply and demand, consumer spending is the demand. With the current rate of Australian spending, there are only a couple of viable outcomes. Either household income has to increase, not likely, based on recent wage growth figures, Australian wage growth is almost at historic lows, or people need to spend less. Based on the recent activity of people that I know, spending all of your income, and more, is a very normal thing to do each week. I know very few people who actually save anything. All their disposable income is spent pretty much as soon as it comes in. They all seem to have multiple credit card debt, a couple of car loans, and a large mortgage to boot. The whole idea of saving for a rainy day has gone out the window. There is a third option, however. Continue on the path that we are currently on. Keep getting deeper into debt, and spending more money than we have. I don't think anybody thinks that this is the right path. The current Governor of the Reserve Bank, Philip Lowe, has warned that high levels of household debt threatens the underlying stability of the Australian economy. As house prices go further down, people will see a reduction in the value of their assets, but their debt level will stay the same. If interest rates go up, as they will certainly do, many people will simply not have the buffer to absorb the increase. Defaults will ensue. People will start losing their homes. So what hope do we have? As an individual, certainly the best thing you can do is to get your own house in order, so to speak. You need to stop spending money you don't have cut up the credit cards, pay off debt before buying things you don't need, and put all your extra money into paying off your mortgage. However, if everyone decided to do this all at once, the economy would slump. Think about it. Nobody would be borrowing money anymore. The banks would completely lose their underlying business model. The housing market would crash, because few people would be able to buy a house without debt. Restaurants would suffer, as most people would be eating at home to save money. Car sales would plummet, again, because people rely on debt to buy cars. It would have a huge knock-on effect if everyone decided to start being frugal and pay off their debts. And therein lies the problem. Capitalism is debt. At least, our form of capitalism. Our economy will not work unless we have people using credit cards and getting home loans. I'm not suggesting we should abandon the capitalist model. In terms of everyone having food, shelter, and hot water, it's probably the best system that we've had to date. But we do need to keep an eye on it. Just because something has been quite successful does not mean it will forever be so. All the issues we are facing currently are structural in nature. 
So ultimately, they need a structural solution. Asking everyone to save more money, or to spend less, or to pay off their credit cards is not going to work. We need rules in place across multiple terms of government. If we keep changing the rules every few years, instability and inequality grows. If we look at history, unstable governments are prone to collapse. Inequality destroys nations. A massive underclass will topple the country. So the news isn't good. But when is the news ever good? We can only plod our way through these hard economic times trying to do the best we can for our family and local community. Certainly, saving a little bit of extra money, paying off your debts, and volunteering your time where you can will not go astray.